Hi folks, welcome. I wanted to give you a short explanation video for the uh, information literacy project because this project is a little bit more involved than some of the things we've done so far. Uh, so this is what the document looks like. I just want to show you where you can find this. Um, if you go to our Moodle page under week 12, um, if you have to go to the information literacy project folder and then this file you can find within that folder. I had sent this out by email as well. Um, but just so you know where to find this, because uh, like I said, it's a little bit more involved than some of our other projects. Uh, so what is it? So um, it's an annotated bibliography, and that might not help too much, but I'm gonna explain what that means. Um, in this video, I have some examples and so forth. Um, Times New Roman double space 12.5 one inch margins in APA format. In APA format, something I have some resources available for you. Um, some of the assigned readings were on APA format. I'm not going to give you a detailed tutorial on that in this video, but um, I'll show you the resources that you need access uh, to, to, to do the APA format. So, APA format um, it's an academic style guide, and so style guides are essentially uh, guides to the way. You format papers and the way you uh, do citations, okay, and citations are uh, the way you let your reader know uh, where information is coming from. And so there are very specific ways you do this. And um, it's one of the uh, most important skills you need to kind of pick up early on in your academic career, because when you get into later courses, people are going to assume that you understand what it means to cite your sources. And they're going to also expect you to be able to figure out how to cite your sources according to different style guides. The other ones are MLA in uh, Chicago. There's also the American Medical Association, and, and it goes on and on. Uh, but APA format, it's the American uh, Psychology Association, um, and they have their own, their own way to do things. Okay, so why do we do this? Okay, so uh, two things. One thing, information literacy is a, is a crucial skill. We're talking a little bit about evaluating sources. How do you know a source is credible? How do you know a source is relevant to what you're searching for? Um, all that good stuff. And so this is a life skill. It's an academic skill. And so we're doing this project to kind of get your feet wet with uh, doing research, evaluating sources, citing sources, all that good stuff. Um, and then that kind of goes into the next part. So the next part is, uh, you know, what you're doing is an annotated bibliography, an annotated bibliography. Okay, big word, um, but it's a really simple concept. I mean, it's just a way to organize your notes when you're doing research. And so when you're doing research in a, in a scholarly setting in college, um, it's extremely important that you have organized notes, because if you don't have organized notes, then you're going to end up plagiarizing um, without meaning to plagiarize. And so uh, when you keep detailed notes, you know which information you got from which source. And you have a kind of a, a paper trail, a record of all the sources you accessed and your notes to remind you of what was in each source. Um, so that, that way, when you go to write your paper, if you're writing a paper, you're not writing a paper for this project. But when you go to write your paper, you know, you remember which information came from which source. Um, so you can cite that information to let your reader know which information came from which source. And as we talked about with uh, the plagiarism uh, unit, you know, in in, uh, in scholarly writing in college, you don't just have to cite it when you when you take someone else's words. Uh, whenever you take an idea that isn't kind of common knowledge, you have to cite where you got that idea from. And so it becomes a very important thing. So if it, come, it becomes very important that you keep detailed notes when you're doing research. The annotated bibliography is how you do that. Um, it, but it's actually a very simple kind of thing you need to do, which I'll show you uh, next. So information literacy, uh, doing research, that's kind of what, why we're doing this. It, it kind of gets your feet wet um, with those things. OK, so what is the assignment? So you're going to use the college library and, um, and Google uh, to find five credible sources. And you know what you're researching is what your intended career so I know most of you are nursing students. It might be all of you are nursing students. Um, so you're gonna you're gonna you do do some research on on nursing, and I have some uh, questions that you're gonna need to ask that your that your sources should answer uh, below here. Okay, so you'll find the five sources. They've got to be cited in APA format. The whole paper needs to be set up in APA style uh, with a cover page, a running head, 
Um, you don't need an abstract. I should take that off here. No abstract uh, for this one. But so anyway, you'll need a cover page. You'll need an annotated bibliography, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so you go out and find five sources, um, and then you'll read them, and then you'll take notes, and then you'll write your notes in your annotated bibliography, um, and, and that's pretty much what you need to do. Um, and so for each source, the notes that you'll take, they kind of are going to do a couple things. So number one, why did you uh, determine that that source was credible? How do you know it's credible and reliable information? And number two, just summarize the main points of the source and anything else that seems kind of relevant um, to your project. And in notes and annotated bibliographies, you can also include more critical comments. So if you disagree with the source, whatever it might be, um, that's another part of it. But for this, I'm just looking for you to kind of summarize the main points. Okay, and what I'm trying to see, I want, so the five sources you get, I want you to answer these questions about your career. Uh, so the first one is what education is necessary for an entry level position in your intended career? Is license, licensure uh, needed for this career? What steps must be taken to obtain a license? Uh, what opportunities exist for career development on the job training or further education in this career? Uh, what is the daily routine of someone working in this field? What kind of responsibilities and skills are involved? What's the work environment? Uh, with whom would you be working in and what capacity? Uh, what is the median pay? Does the pay different based on region? Uh, what is the job outlook for this career? Are jobs increasing or decreasing in the field? How difficult is it to find employment in this career? Uh, does, it, does, it, uh, does this change based on region? Um, what kind of specializations exist within this career? What specific types of positions might be available? So you don't need to answer these questions, but I want to see that your research and your notes um, kind of do answer these questions. So in other words, these questions should be kind of answered within um, within the annotations of your sources. Okay, and um, just one little kind of cheat sheet thing for you here. Um, you can answer almost all these questions if you go to the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook and look up whichever career it is um, you're choosing. And so that's kind of a freebie for you. And uh, just to back up, so the types, of, and so I want you to get certain types of sources. And so I want you to get at least two articles from the college library's databases, just um, to give you a little practice doing that. But that's something you're going to need to do um, in other courses, and it's just uh, an important thing to start to get used to. Um, you can leave out the ebook or book for this one. Um, because uh, we're kind of uh, doing distant learning here. So don't worry about that so much. But you could do an ebook. Um, those shouldn't be too hard to find. Uh, but this, the other two that are required, I want you to get uh, one website with a dot, uh, .gov domain name and one website with a dot .edu domain name. These will be really, really helpful. And uh, in another video, I explained how to do Google advanced searches with uh, domain name filters. So those are the kinds of sources you need. Uh, these are the questions that your, that your research should answer. Um, and so the next thing to do is to show you kind of what an annotated bibliography uh, looks like. And so if we go back to our Moodle page, <coughs> I've got some resources for you here. Um, why don't I just jump into what an annotated bibliography looks like? And so, it's, again, it's not as complicated as it sounds. It's really quite simple. If it's PDF to open up, okay. And so, uh, you know, these boxes are, you know, you would need to put these boxes in your annotated bibliography. These are just explanations of the formatting. Um, but uh, here's what it looks like. You just have kind of a title here, you know, your, your topic in annotated bibliography. Um, and then you have citations uh, done in APA style. And then below each citation, you've got notes. And the notes need to be written in your own words. Um, if you're taking uh, exact words from the source, those need to be put in quotation marks and uh, cited with, uh, and you need to cite the page number. Um, as well, uh, if you're taking exact quotes, but I really would prefer it if you would just write it in your own words. The whole idea is to kind of summarize briefly, not to just copy and paste. Um, 
Yeah, and, and then you just keep repeating that process. Cite the source in APA format, put your notes in, do the next source. Okay, five, five in total. Um, say 100 words of notes per source. Um, and, and that's pretty much what it is. Okay, and then, so what do I want the whole thing to, to look like? I have a, an example of an APA sample paper. And so this, you're not doing a whole essay here. Um, you're, this is only an annotated bibliography. So you only need like really two parts um, of, of the APA paper. The first part is the cover page. And so in APA format, you have a cover page, you have a title, and so your title could just be what something like, a, you know, nursing annotated bibliography or something like that. Your name, uh, Trocare College, um, you know, author note, um, you can you can omit that from this if you want to, but um, you can just put your name, you know, the school, your major, if you wanted to do that. And you can include this other stuff if you want to. This is kind of the way it's uh, set up in a professional uh, paper, but really the important things, title, name, college. Um, usually in APA, you put an abstract. You don't need to put an abstract because you don't have a whole paper for this one. And then obviously, for a whole APA paper, you would have a research paper. Uh, you're not doing a whole paper. So we're just going to have the cover page and then the annotated uh, bibliography. And so, you know, within a, uh, a normal APA paper, you would have a references list at the end like this. And there wouldn't be any notes included because um, in, in, in the final draft of a paper, you don't need to include uh, the notes. So, you know, in the kind of steps of a, of a research paper, the annotated bibliography is like part one. And it's like uh, all your all your notes and very organized. Um, and then part two would be you would actually compose the paper. We're only doing part one. We're not doing part two. And so anyway, you'd have your cover page and then your annotated bibliography would look something uh, like this, um, you know, with the source and with uh, the notes. And the source there should be listed alphabetically. That's an important thing because it's important to keep your notes uh, organized uh, in that way. And I've got some other things on here. Um, I know I, I had a... Uh, Last week, I had uh, assigned uh, APA format from the Troll Care Library, which is good. I put I put a few more here. There's APA Style Guide at Purdue Owl, um, and then there's a couple of videos. The basic formatting can be difficult because it's a little there's some challenges with word processing with the running head and the page number. Um, so that that could be helpful. And then a, a video guide to the references page and how to set up um, those citations. But I think that's it. I'm gonna stop it there. Um, please let me know if you have questions. So there are a lot of, there's a lot more involved with this. Um, it's kind of a crash course in research and APA citations. And so uh, please reach out to me if you have questions about this. But, uh, but you know, you have all the resources available uh, here that you would need uh, to do uh, the project. So anyway, uh, the short, um explanation you got to five find five sources on your intended career that need to answer the questions in uh, uh the assignment description um you're going to cite them in apa um you're going to you put notes in your own words for each one and you're going to set up the whole paper like an apa paper so i hope that's all clear let me know if you have questions uh good luck